Hey everyone, my name is Kerry Wolf and welcome back to Homestuck. As you can see, the sprites have been added again. And now there's even more weird shenanigans going on. There's a freaking Dave Petter now. Damn! Damn! Rose, I'm a fucking troll now. And her beautiful bird. And also, a human boy? Haha, <laughs> I can't- I don't even- Shit! Rose! My claws! Look at these fucking claws. Schnick, 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 schnick. <laughs> OMG. Rose, look! I see your claws, Dave. They're neat! Hahaha! <laughs> Holy shit, I am a goddamn debacle of a thing, aren't I? It is kinda great? I... I sort of love this? That's wonderful, Dave and Napetta. I'm very happy for you both. Sigh. What's wrong, Rose? Jazz Rose, I mean. Nothing. Uh, what's wrong is she can no longer date you. <laughs> Thank god for that. Saito is up to Jazz Rose in a coy and hella feline manner, sounding tickle as fuck through my little three-shaped snout deal. Arches back huge up and being all like bumping into Rose with my tall curve back and shit. Oh no, it's, he's he's they got the Nepeta role-playing thing. <laughs> like cats do, I'm pretty sure. Fuck yeah, they do. OMG, they do the tall back thing all the time when they're happy. And I'm doing that right now. He. <laughs> Dave, what do you think you're doing? Dave Petta kindly and radly informs Jess Rose he is doing a bit of role-playing and no, not even ironically. I mean, she. Shit. Mm. What? Jess Rose, yo, um, I'm confused about my gender suddenly. What am I now? I don't know, Dave. Well, what are you? I mean... What do you feel like now? A boy or a girl? Your cat was a boy, right? Yes, he was a boy. So what does that make you now? I don't know. I hadn't thought much about it. I think I am probably still a girl. Cats don't have partic particularly deep feelings about gender or form strong identities around the idea. Okay, that's cool. But both Dave and Nepeta did have strong identities as a boy and girl. So I don't know where that leaves me. Does it even matter? I have no idea. I just started being Dave Petta like three seconds ago. I'm not sure what matters to me yet. I think I do like being me though. It's a really weird feeling. I mean, not weird, just like jarring in contrast with how both me spent so long feeling like... I think I know what you mean. You do? Yes, I was really having the time of my life after I became Jazz Rose. Well, for a while there at least. For a while? What's wrong now? Oh, nothing. Come on, tell me! It's hard to put into males what I am feeling suddenly. I think it might be... Loneliness? Lonely... Lonely... What? Loneliness? Why? I'm here to keep you company. And Mad Hatter Dude is still over there. Uh... Doing... Whatever the fuck it is he's doing? You still have lots of friends. I know, but since your... Transformation? Some feelings I thought I had put behind me at the moment of my transformation quickly returned. They were dug up from their shallow graves and left on my doorstep by... You know what? I'm not even in the mood to finish that incredibly apt analogy. You will have to connect the dots yourself. What feelings return? As a cat, I never had any other girl cats around to be friendly with. That was a very simple emotion with which I could probably cope if it was all that was in play. The rose half is more complicated. I have memories from a lot of roses. Is this true for you as well? I mean, memories from many Daves and Nepetos? Yeah, it uh... Sure is a clusterfuck of sad dead Daves and sad dead Nepetos in my head. It feels alright though. Like I'm a lot more detached from those experiences than I ever felt before. But also, there is a distinct feeling of having one Dave and Nepeta stand out from the crowd of memories. The versions of Dave, Sprite, and Nepeta I existed as right up until we both shook hands. They still kind of feel like the main ones, you know? Yes, exactly. The Rose I was prior to this had just lost everything before she was killed. Her friends and also her mate Sprite. When I came back as a Sprite, not as Jasper yet, mind you, I was relieved to see everybody again. But it was also a melancholy return. I knew that she couldn't be with me anymore because I was no longer a real Rose. But when I became Jasper's, everything changed again. I was a whole new being. 
Before me stretched a horizon full of small, distant, and slightly jousting curiosities to investigate, because you never know when something like that might turn out to be a mouse. There were so many, many new possibilities. Dude, I must say I am so stoked for the cat things you're saying. Shush, Dave! And yes, I concur about the cat things. Anyway, one of the new things that opened up to me was... The idea that I didn't have to be alone anymore, that I was reborn, more thrilled to be alive than I can ever remember being in any incarnation, and that there was someone perfect waiting for me to bring her back. Another estranged soul like me. And now, I guess it's all ruin. What's ruin? Never mind, Dave. Come on, tell me. Forget it. Rose. Jazz Rose. Damn it, you can't possibly just leave the story there. Possibly. Fuck. Still getting the hang of mastering my cute as hell urge to do cat puns. Literally, literally, whatever it could conceivably occur to me. Literally laughing my ass off. That's a good one. Jess Rose. Jess Rose. Jess. Jess be cat. Shit, that's a bad nickname. Sorry. Jess Rose. Jess Rose Sprite Squared. You were talking about Napetta, weren't you? I mean me. Or a part of me. Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> Gotta love how Jake is just minding his own damn business and having fun in the background. Dave, she was going to be my wife, but thank god that didn't happen. <laughs> Sigh. I was? Uh, she was? Yes, Dave, I'm quite sure of it. Um, well, first of all, maybe you should stop calling me Dave? My name is Dave Petta now. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry, Dave Petta. No offense, but the Dave part of you is sort of the fly in the ointment here, so when I look at you, that tends to be who I see. Yeah, that's cool. Since he became a bird, that part of me got pretty used to being a most unwelcome Dave in practically all situations, let alone when he really crashes a tea date through accidental body sharing shenanigans. But now, I'm like this whole new neat kind of sprite with legs again, and claws, and shit, and I prefer that my new identity be respected, please. Yeah, I am very sorry. I was just sad is all. Uh, I don't understand. You could even say I know that feel. Haha, <laughs> lowering my ass off. I love that there's this whole side of me that is all freshly tickled by even the most basic applications of irony. For instance, that was some weak soft milk, but here I am lapping it up. B? Or boo, I don't know what that is. It pleases me to hear that you have rediscovered the joys of entry level irony, Dave Petta. But yeah, sorry for blowing our date. Even if I... She... Wasn't sure what to make of the date? She was really flattered that you liked her though. But I don't know if it would have led to marriage. I think y'all may have been about pouncing the gun on that. I don't think so. I had it all figured out. Yeah, that's what you think, Jasper's right. She never got a chance to see any of my moves though. So I guess we'll never know. I don't know. Getting married isn't even a thing for trolls. It was just a figure of speech. It isn't a thing for Kat either, remember? Okay, but even so, I still don't think you can force something like that. We would have needed to spend more time together and stuff to find out. Yes, we would have spent that time together, and it would have turned out to be magical. Trust me. I, I feel like Jasper, so you're being kind of like... way too... confident? I don't think it would have happened that way. God damn, Rose, getting some kitty cat mixed up in y'all made you so much hella smugger than usual, for real Z's. I kinda dig it. It suits you. Does it? I mean, you were always full of yourself, but now you're owning it so completely. She was kinda full of herself, but it was like a subtle full of herself, you know? Feels a lot more honest, to be honest. That is... Wow. Actually, such a nice compliment. Thank you, Dave Petal. You know, the fridge is like all fucking set up and whatnot. The tea is there. Jake is still setting the mood with his space cadet antics on a nearby hill. We could just like... Uh, keep doing our date. What? You can't, guys. You're siblings. You're half siblings. I mean, platonically, of course. Of course, like a cat tongue. Actually, you know what? Never mind. That fucking sucked. But yeah, what's the big deal? Let's keep tea partying and chatting about our unique sprite issues and stuff. Maybe even do a smidgen of choice RPing if it strikes our fancy. I think that could turn out to be pretty cute and dope. Hmm. Maybe. You know, I gotta say, the Napetta part of me is like, genuinely mystified about what the issue even is. What issue? Us dating? Like as in a normal romantic tea drinking date? This just keeps getting weirder, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it makes sense that she wouldn't understand. I mean, the date part of me is obviously all like, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. 
when I think about it. But that little fussy brain tantrum isn't making me feel weird or uncomfortable. It's just sort of cracking me up. I swear to God, you better not date, okay? It's too weird. Huh, that's a good way of putting it. My inner mono dialogues have been very amusing to me too. I guess I am still just a bit uncertain about my nature and my beliefs and whatnot. What about you though? You are part cat, so... So? So how do you really feel about that... issue? I mean, as far as both sides of me know, cats aren't too concerned with that, right? After a while, they don't see brother and sister kitties, they just, uh... See more kitties who are just like, uh, the other kitties. Can, can, can this stop getting more weird? Like, it's too much. Um... Ugh. There is such a potent force within me that squirms at every word of this train of thought, Dave Peta. Good grief Rose was such a stuffy girl, wasn't she? Yep. But yes, you're basically correct. Asking the Jasper's half about this issue would be like showing him two slightly different gray swatches and asking his opinion on which color to paint the observatory. So to answer your question, I... I don't know. I really don't know about any of this. My dreams of having a beautiful troll girl for a wife were dashed moments ago, so I've been speaking from a despondent state of mind since you came into existence, but maybe what you're saying makes sense. I will need some time to mail it over. Ha, <laughs> meow, so good. That was supposed to be to me mo, mo right? Yes, Dave Peta, that meant mo. But yes, I agree. There's so much to figure out now. Shippy popping in my jumbo sprite brain suddenly. Popping like a bunch of silly gophers out their fucking surprise holes. Want to murder them gophers because instincts. But mainly that is just a metaphor for understanding the gophers. Want to like get myself. How about we help each other get ourselves? But whoa, non-suggestively, non-suggestively. I knew you weren't being suggestive. Chill out. No, I feel like it needs to be said at this point. <laughs> so how would you like me to help you get yourself? I don't know. When we were on our date and you were talking to me about stuff and I was acting all embarrassed, that was pretty cool. Or at least Napeta thought so. You mean about her liking car cat and such? Yeah. You know what's crazy is, even in my new form, I don't even feel conflicted about that. It sort of feels right still. I would have thought I'd be a mess of contradictions about that, but hmm, nope. Weird, right? Uh, maybe you like car cat. If you say so. Not that I'm saying I should act on that or anything. It's like you were saying about being the odd rose out. And when you got Jasper's, everything changed. These are brand new lives for us, so it feels like I should try to leave the old stuff behind. But that means I also gotta figure out what to do with my life now. Or my pseudo life. Whatever the hell it is you have when you are sprite squared. Then what do you want to do with your pseudo life? Hmm. Oh man, you're gonna think I'm crazy for even saying this? I already think we're both crazy. I have this weird urge to go fight Lord English? What the fuck? I know, right? I'm just strangely drawn to the idea. I wasn't at all before, as a really depressed bird version of Dave. And the Peta didn't even know who he was until recently. But now it sounds cool suddenly. I feel like the exact blend of people I am is a being that he should in some way be vulnerable to. I can't even explain why I feel that way. So maybe the prophecy or whatever the heck that was that Dave is supposed to defeat Lord English, maybe it meant another version of Dave. Hmm, something to think about. Well, you have to follow your heart, I suppose. Dave Peta definitely stalks their heart as it minds its own business. Beating at the bank of a nearby stream, they crouch into one of those quintessential cat poses with like their butt in the air. Dave Peta starts wiggling their ass furiously. Gets mildly distracted by wiggling of own ass, becomes more intrigued by movement of ass than beating of heart. Is this what we're doing now? Nah, I'm just messing. Okay, I think if we are going to make a habit of roleplaying, I would like to script out some scenarios in advance, okay? I'm concerned that too much improvisation could end up muddying the narrative. Laughing my ass off. Okay, you go right ahead and do that. God, this is gonna be even weirder than all the other weird interactions between all the other weird characters. So, what do you want to do now? You're not gonna go off to fight English right away, are you? Hmm... No, I don't think so. There's no hurry. The dude's whole shtick is being basically eternal and always being already here or whatever, wherever here is. In this case, I guess it just means out there somewhere. I think there are a 
or real things I want to take care of here before I sink my claws into that grade A slab of beef prey? Like what? Like... God, I hate- I hate, kinda hate seeing these two sprites talk because they both flash so much. There's somebody I'd like to catch up with first. Who? Just a couple of bros from the past. I think they would want to see me before I go and maybe find out that you're actually alive. Or at least be made aware that I exist at all as a badass double sprite. Alright, please give these bros my best then. I will. Eh, yeah, well. Get away from this freaking blinking bright sprightness. Good gracious for that. Who is that? Is that a uh, Arqueous Sprite? D doing what exactly? Are, are you like the the server character now? <laughs> Wait, what? Gris Rig. Was, was that one of the plans? Are they s still supposed to be building stuff? What? I don't remember this. This tower is pretty goddamn high already. Did we? Oh, jeez, what the hell? Wait, what? Are those making artifact stuff? Dude, what are you even doing? I'm so confuzzled. Is that what they were all working on? Making them swirls? <laughs> okay. Weird. This is like some kind of weird brotherly reunion. Yeah, kind of. And it really- There's too much weird relationships going on because there's too many weird versions of like every character out there it's so okay so is it like when they're squared they blink a lot because the other spice don't do that yeah what up bro <laughs> oh back to the real strider bros damn and i thought our houses were pointlessly tall before it just doesn't stop from being from keep constantly getting more and more vertically enormous shit is downright precipitous at this point. Like, up ways. Haha, <laughs> yeah. We made sure as fuck not to come right out and literally describe that building as tall. Hell yes. Who needs small and serviceable adjectives when the most ass backwards away of saying a thing is right there? Tantalizing hidden within the vast ocean of language. Like a treasure and a huge shitty clam. We are way on the same page philosophically here. Who is surprised by this? Zero people is who? So I see the bros, the Strider bros are hanging out and having a grand old time. Sounds like a club for losers to me. They're lucky they don't have any members. Otherwise, they all be lame as hell. Yeah. So, uh... Why do the houses need to be so tall again? I never actually understood that. Except to reach the gates. But once we all figure out how to fly and shit, that became so pointless. Yeah, after a while in the game, building kind of stopped mattering. Except near the end, getting them to the top is just a point of completion. Then you dump the Gris rig on top of it, apparently. That lets the thing spray out all the Gris from the horde in the planet's core. Kind of like a huge oil derrick, I guess. Okay, why are we doing that? Oh, how do you know this? Do you guys have like a manual or... I'm in communication with Arcrius Sprite. He's working on it now. So you're in communication with him like... Right now? Yes, via my shades. Which he incidentally used to be. Like, as a computer? Which he lived inside as my autoresponder? Right, and uh, why did you make that thing again? Not that you ever told me before. Again, it's just like a stammering tack on to that sentence so as to try and sound not too fucking rude. I don't think it's a rude question. It's perfectly fair to wonder what was going through my head when I made him. I spent a lot of time wondering about that myself. So you just straight up programmed a copy of your brain. There was some programming involved, but also a bit of cheating the mapping of a capture log ghost imprint of my brain. I guess part of it was just about trying to understand myself, but I don't think I would have put it that way at the time. For a while, I insisted he was meant to be a debate partner or some horseshit. I was pretty young and had some stupid ideas about irony in particular, but also a lot of mostly Fox intellectual dots on a wide variety of topics like philosophy, consciousness, programming, identity, history, ancient pop culture, really around the full gamut of pretension. Not that I don't still find that stuff interesting. I just like to think I'm somewhat less full of shit about it all now. Yeah, me too. I mean, about my interests and stuff. Creating him was an interesting exercise, I guess. But over the years, I came to see his development as one of my biggest mistakes. He sort of turned into a monster, but I could never bring myself to get rid of him. Or even really blame him for being an asshole. Because he wasn't 
actually that different from me. Like, by definition. He seems alright as Arqueous though. At least he keeps him busy, obsessing over his muscles, asking for milk and shit like that. Hmm. I guess I started some projects I regretted. But nothing like making a milk weirdo eventually exists. It sounds fucked up, but it's also kind of an awesome story in its own way. I guess so. Maybe I'm lucky I was never that good with computers. Now computer art, that's a different story. Okay, it actually isn't. I fucking suck at that too. But damn it, I tried my best and make some magic happen at least in my own mind. So maybe that's good enough. It certainly worked out for you in my universe. Yeah, I mean, I did capture like my own ghost brain once. But I didn't know what to make of that and thought it was kind of weird, so that never really went anywhere. Probably for the best. It definitely is. Tinkering with your own mind? Or identity or whatever? It's a dark road to go down. There are enough splinters of everyone running around out there as it is. That's true, man. Just as a natural byproduct of our reality. For me in particular, probably for you too as a time player. That process doesn't need to be encouraged or fucked with. For real. My bro did cool things with computers too. I mean, nothing like making a clone of his brain or anything, thank god. Just some absurd bullshit with web bots and stuff, mostly to help prop up his various enterprises. You mean the porn stuff. Yeah, but with puppets, of course. It was always about the puppets. Naturally. He made all these porn bots that would just talk to each other in a chat room endlessly. All like getting each other riled up about squishy bottoms and whatnot. Actually, it was pretty entertaining to watch them go at it for hours. I think they may have been teetering on a threshold of something resembling self-awareness. Except they only seem to apply that faculty to reach even more heightened states of sexual excitement for a bunch of nude soft puppets. That sounds... oddly rewarding. I mean, not to say he wasn't still a douche, but as a pastime, cultivating a group of earnest, erotic, puppet-loving chatbots sounds so much more relaxing than painstakingly constructing a version of your own brain and then arguing with it for years thereafter. Almost like tending to a little flock of pigeons. Yeah, you know he did some cool things. It wasn't necessarily all inherently terrible. Things I would really appreciate under better circumstances. He definitely had a lot of drive and also some, uh, ideas that warranted a certain amount of respect, I guess. He just... maybe should not have been allowed near a child. So I'm saying, uh, you're absolutely right, Dave. And, uh, I guess we'll leave this episode here for now. But it's nice that we're getting some normal chats, uh, with the Dave Strider bros. Also, they didn't really explain why we're building these goddamn buildings? Why are we doing that? Did they explain it? I feel like they didn't, but I guess uh, they might explain it once we get uh, past the puppet ass talk. But for now, I'll leave this video here, so thank you guys so much for watching this. Let me know what you think about all them terrible puppet porn, and I'll see you guys in the next video.